Welcome to another edition of the Mark Jackson Show. I'm Mark Jackson. This is my dynamic co-host, my guy, Blue. It's another edition of the Night Mode. It's been a great weekend, a great night of basketball games, playoff basketball games. We've been working our tails off. It's been an exciting time. Our show group chat was even buzzing. What you think about it, Blue? Nah, Night Mode going crazy, man. It was a good day today. Watched a lot of games. We got a lot to talk about. I hope you're ready. It's a lot I on my stay mind, ready, man. man. I, I, I stay ready. Man, you see, I got the you see, I got the Lakers. I got the I got a little, it's not gold, but I had to throw on something to show that we still riding. It was a tough loss tonight, but we still we're gonna get into it. Don't worry. But okay. Before that, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. They're keeping the lights on. Scan the QR code in the corner. It'll take you right to the site. Play the pick'em game. That's our favorite. Actually, earlier I was just texting my pops. I was saying how D'Lo was going to be the man tonight. It started off early looking like it was, but uh, he cooled down pretty quick. So uh, go play that, man. And yeah, then your, they went, your, your chat went on, on mute. <laughs> I know, man. I know. I, I was feeling good for a second. Then he started missing shots. I'm like, all right, all right. Maybe he's not the man of the night. It's tough, man. Yeah, tough it's loss. Tough. tough loss. Tough loss, man. So what did you think about about – that that Lakers game because that's that's just fresh on my mind. I can't I can't go to anything else before we address what I just saw. Was it what happened just now? What we talked about before. You have to play forty eight minutes of basketball, effective, efficient, smart basketball against this Denver Nuggets team. They're not going to quit. They're not going to surrender. They're not going to give up. They're going to chip away. And I thought the Lakers blew a 20-point lead, and you don't, lose, you don't blow a 20-point lead by a 20-point shot. You did it, they did it slow, methodical, and they climbed their way back into the game. You changed 20 to 15, 15 to 10, 10 to 5, and then all of a sudden looking around and say, how did the lead get blown? Because you turned it over, you took careless shots. I'm not going to be in a movie with Denzel Washington trying to hit the go-to lines. That's Denzel's part. And I think what happened in the game, you had guys taking out-of-character shots and not trying to close out. LeBron made big plays, but you start to look and really break down how the game got away. Careless trips down the floor, turning it over, jacked up, quick shots, uh, not defending, missing assignments, and all of a sudden, you got to win the game, and you give the Denver Nuggets a chance to bring it home, and they did exactly that. I'm going to get to what you just said, because I, I agree exactly with that. But I got to ask, for that final play, I saw Jamal Murray say, oh, it was as simple as, I, he said, I'm, I'm a little bit exhausted, so I can't really remember, but it was as simple as a double screen and a switch to get AD on that final play and a tough shot. Was it as simple as that, or what did you see from a coach's aspect on that final play of the game? Uh, truthfully, I saw a good defense, and I saw a good, good execution on the offensive end. We knew what they was going to go to. The Lakers even knew it. That's why they put LeBron on Jamal Murray. So then, they, therefore, when Joker and Murray get into two-man action, you're switching Anthony Davis onto Murray, and you're comfortable with LeBron defending Joker in that situation. So both teams got exactly what they wanted at that situation. I got the ball in my second-best player's hands, a home run hitter, a guy that's not afraid of the bright lights, everybody out of the way. It's time to dance. He did exactly that. Got to his spot. Good defense by AD. Wasn't good enough. Talk about it all the time. I will take great offense over great defense any day of the week. Got to his spot, elevated, and, and you see that, that bench. I mean, it, 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 with balls in the air, it looked like everything froze for a second. Great, great execution and a big-time shot by Jamal Murray. Yeah, man, that was a big play at the end, big-time shot. But You know, what I, what I will say is this. We fall in love with the one shot and think that won the game. That didn't win the game. It's the, it's the poor execution. To me, I would have started the fourth quarter with Anthony Davis in the game. I'm not playing around. I know the Joker needs a breather. You take Joker out, I'm not buying time. I'm looking to put you away and, and tie this series up. I thought they tried to steal minutes by, by giving AD a breather and then bringing AD back and giving LeBron a breather, a breather. No, no, no. Let's win this basketball game and give this championship team this, the, the respect that they, they earned and deserve. Yeah, let's talk about the game because I got some things to get off my chest, man. I agree with you. The Lakers got cute. They got a lead. They started getting cute. They started getting in their bag. And for a minute, 
they went away from what was the working formula, which went, they went back to at the end of the game with that LeBron and AD pick and roll. But it was a, it was a good stretch where, like you said, the backup singers took the microphone and attempted to be Michael Jackson. Tito, stay in your lane. <laughs> I mean, you're right and i would have i would have preferred even even they gave d'angelo russell a long breather i love the defense played you know by the supporting cast but i need the offense to continue to execute so when lebron james is not in pick and roll with anthony davis i want d'angelo russell on the court and i want him to be in the pick and roll with anthony davis i'll put d'angelo russell in the pick and roll with lebron james but i want them on the floor and, and I'm not going to overreact when D'Angelo Russell turns the basketball over with a careless pass. Yes, that's wrong. I'm going to pull him over to the side. I'm going to chastise him like grown folks do. I'm going to tell him we need him to be better. We need him to execute. And I'm going to send him back on. I'm not going to leave him on the bench because he's too valuable on the offensive end of the floor. we got to make sure we continue to score and keep the pressure on them. Things were too easy for the Denver Nuggets. Joker backing down. No double team. At some point, I thought – one thing I thought – First possession of the game, the Lakers double team Joker. I disagreed with that. I think you pick and choose your spots when he's looking to be aggressive like he was in the fourth quarter, carrying that offense. Okay, let's fire at him and get the ball out of his hands. That's when you do that. They decided not to at that time, and he controlled everything. Too big, too strong, too talented. Got to his spots, and it was easy offense where they chipped away, chipped away at the Lakers' lead. At what point does LeBron get a break, man? At what point does he get a break? I'm watching this game tonight, and it's, it's feeling like LeBron in Cleveland. When does he get the help from this cast? It's dudes that can play on that roster that I need them to show up, man. It's, it's too much pressure on LeBron. He's dunking on people in year 17. Come on, man. Step up. You're right, and I agree. But the sad part is, to whom much is given, much is required. I can't afford to give you a breather. Finish this ball game, finish the assignment, and I'll give you all the rest you want tomorrow. You can relax. You don't even have to see my face. You don't even have to show up. Finish this ball game. All we need is nine minutes, eight minutes, five minutes, four minutes. I cannot afford to give you a breather because this is a championship team, and this is the moment that the great ones embrace. I need you, and, and, and you put a demand on them, and, 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 and it's too easy. I'll, I'll, run out, I'll, I'll run out of timeouts. I'll call as many timeouts as you want but I need you on the court because this is a dangerous team and I don't have the luxury of having you sitting beside me. Yeah, it's tough. When you lose a game by 20, 30 points, you get blown out. It's, it's a little easier to digest and be like, all right, we made mistakes. But in the playoffs, when you lose a game like this and it's heartbreaking, as the Lakers, how do you uh, readjust and come back from a loss of this magnitude? The one thing you can do, you look and say, what we put together as a plan is doable. We was up 20, executing the plan. The only way they gotten back into this ball game is when we deviated from the plan, when we got careless and reckless and all of a sudden started freestyling and, and getting out of our lanes. We do that, we stand no chance. This team has beat us uh, 10, 10 straight times. There's a reason why. We got to find a way to put 48 minutes of Laker basketball together on the court, on both sides of the court, and execute to beat this team. We know that. We didn't do it. 47 and a half ain't cutting it. 47 and, tw and, 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 and 40 seconds ain't cutting it. We got to play 48 minutes of our brand of basketball, being smart, taking smart shots, controlling the tempo, and dictating the defensive end who hurts us. Oh, we don't stand a chance. We did it, so it's doable. Let's have the mindset that this is too zip but we're going back home. All they did, like, like every other series we talk about, is they took care of their home. Let's take care of our home and come back to the mile high. Now, tonight, I felt, I felt a little some type of way. I want to know what your opinion is because I heard AD come out and say the NBA, has a, the league has a problem with me in, in regards to him not getting uh, the nod for a defensive player of the year finalist. When I watch tonight, I see that he's competing. But this dude is in the picture of every bucket. Everybody's scoring on him, and the adjustments are not there tonight. What did you see from Anthony Davis on the defensive end? Both things can be right. He can be correct. Not that the league has something against him. Maybe the voters, whoever the voters are, 
went in a different direction. He's an all-time great defender, and I do believe that he is one of the top three defenders in basketball and should, be, should have been on the finalist list. That being said, he is playing against an all-time great center in Nikola Jokic, and, and he had his way. And it's, that, that doesn't mean that Anthony Davis is not a great defender. That just means that a, a great player played spectacular against him and won on his terms, especially in the second half. So both of you, both of you could be correct in your assessment. But I need him to take the challenge. And I continued I – th- I thought the Lakers went away from him also. He was destroying them, especially in the first half. I would have continued to force feed him, continued to play pick and roll and post ups, get him the basketball in the mid range with a stare down on Joker. He was winning that battle on his terms and really wearing, physically wearing out Joker until they stopped going to him and then Joker established a rhythm offensively. Yeah, I would have loved what we saw from Jamal Murray tonight going all in and continuing to battle through his struggles. I would have loved to see. D'Angelo Russell didn't even struggle tonight. He just kind of took his foot on the foot off the gas pedal and stopped. I would have loved to see at the stat line, ha, the, the stat line say 25 shots from D'Angelo Russell tonight as well. Yeah, you're right. And and I, I would probably point the finger at you're playing with LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So a side of you mentally could be like, let me let them get involved. Let me let them make plays instead of keeping your foot on the gas pedal. So it's a give and take. He's got to have the right mentality to stay aggressive offensively. And LeBron and AD also has to they, – they've got to be encouraging and inspiring him to keep his foot on the gas pedal. Don't worry about me. I'm going to get mine. We need you to be aggressive. So it could be a great mixture. And if, if they're not doing it on the court, then my job as the coach is to make sure I, I run something that gives him a quality look or gets him involved offensively. Now, I was watching the game, and one thing that I noticed is those dudes consistently, Jamal Murray and uh, Joker down the stretch – attacked right-handed continuously off the screen. Joker get into his right hand, Jamal Murray get into his right hand all the way up until the end of the game. I'm not sure what the analytics say, but for me watching, I, I'm looking like, yo, at some point, Jamal Murray got to make a step back to his left or Joker got to spin back to his left hand. Am I, am I just seeing it at, at a lower basketball echelon or what, is, what are you seeing as, as Coach Jackson? No, you're right. The problem is you're talking about two of the top players in the world that have the ability to get to their spots on their terms. <clears throat> you put the best defender on them, they find a way to make an adjustment and ultimately get to their spot. I remember a guy <clears throat> only went to his right hand that we played against. I told him I lived on the left. He made four rights and got to my house. So they're going to make the right adjustments. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, you can do whatever you want. They're going to make the right adjustments and make you pay the price. You play good defense, and you live with the results. Yeah, that was a great game tonight, man. That was a great game. What What do you see going back to L.A.? Are we going to even up the series, or, or is it over? The mindset isn't even up the series. The mindset is to make the series 2-1. You have to take care of business in game three. You cannot afford to be down three zip to a team that beat you 10 straight times. Find a way to execute. Understand we gave one away. If we, if we execute and take care of business, we put ourselves in position to be up, be, be down 2-1, and then to see a game four, we could get back to the mile high. But the mindset is take care of game three, do things the right way. I, I would shorten the rotation and, and, and play the guys that I trust the most because I can't afford to give away quarters, halves, uh, possessions. I got to make sure we execute. So I'm going with the guys that I trust, and I'm going to control the tempo when the ball is not in the hands of LeBron James. Mm. All right, man. You know where we're going next. It's a big game tonight. New York basketball. <laughs> Here we go, man. It's a big win for the Knicks. A lot of a lot of things went down at the end of the game, though. I saw Joel Embiid cursing out the refs because they didn't give that call to Tyrese Maxey. I heard the TNT crew go down and say that there should have been a timeout called. What does Coach Jackson have to say about just the mess of the ending that that game was. There's going to be blown shots. There's going to be blown possessions. There's going to be blown calls. To me, the thing it boils down to is from, from, a, from a veteran champion in Kyle Lowry taking the ball out of bounds to a championship coach in Nick Nurse to veterans all around that floor. As soon as you try to take the ball out of bounds and nobody's open, 
it's a timeout. There's no excuses. There is absolutely no excuses. Call the timeout. The problem is they waited and waited and waited and then tried to call a timeout and nobody saw it. Mistake made. But that, that doesn't justify the fact that as soon as you see that nobody's open, there has to be a timeout call. They had a timeout. Where are you going with it? Recklessly, carelessly threw the ball in bounds, put Tyrese Maxey in a tough situation, and forced a turnover. But DiVincenzo knocks down the shot, and the Knicks win. Disappointing, terrible loss. Terrible, heart-wrenching loss for the Philadelphia 76ers. All right, man, you just tap danced. I need the real. Was it a foul? It depends. They call fouls in that situation, and sometimes they look away. There was contact. I believe it was a foul. But I'm not letting the Philadelphia 76ers off the hook. Call a timeout, advance the basketball, get it in bounds, and force them to foul you. Mistakes right. made, careless mistakes that cost you a big-time playoff game where it would have been a huge win. It's just, it's just in, inexcusable, in, in my opinion. So, so the blame is not the referees. The blame is the Philadelphia 76ers being a veteran team, not using wisdom, and calling a timeout. Yeah, you, uh, you, it's a multiple possession game with 30 seconds left. It's no excuse why you should be leaving losing. That's, that was a, it's an experienced team, as you said. That's, that's, too, that's, that's too, much, too many rookie mistakes in a small amount of time for a veteran team. And we make another point, like, we just, like I just finished talking about the Denver game. It's not one play that wins or loses the ball game. How many offensive rebounds did the New York Knicks get? Hardenstein and, and Mitchell Robinson and Josh Hart. How many ov- offensive rebounds? Uh, the, one of the biggest plays, McBride grabs it out of the hands of Maxie, lays it in. How many times did they give up extra possessions by not boxing out and not making multiple effort pursuing the basketball? That cost them a playoff game. I got to give a shout out to Joel and B, man. He playing through injury. It looked like somebody hit him with a tranquilizer. He running up down the court, man. He barely making it up and still playing at an all-star level. It's amazing. I got to tip my hat to it. How did the Knicks deal with that Maxi and Bede combo and slow them down as the game progressed? I don't think they slowed them down. I think they had their way. You're talking about, uh, you know, putting numbers together. Both guys, spectacular nights. Uh, offensively, 34 and 35. 10, 10 assists, 10 rebounds, four rebounds. They, they, they won on their terms on the offensive end. And, and it was a stellar performance by both guys. Maxie made big plays. Uh, Embiid made big plays, played through injuries, brought back memories as I was a kid watching the great Willis Reed and the New York, New York Knicks going against the Lakers, hobbled out the tunnel, knocked down the first two shots, and then was done for the night, but inspired his basketball team to ultimately win a championship. It was inspiring watching Joel Embiid and him fight through fatigue, fight through hurt, pain, uh, injury, and uh, put on the type of performance that he put on. But I'm not being an old grouch. If I'm coaching Joel Embiid, I love what you're doing. But I'm going to show him five, six, seven times where if you go get the the rebound on the defensive end, we're out of here. So we can fall in love with the performance. I can acknowledge you fighting through pain. But give me the extra effort chasing down those rebounds. That's all. I'm not being an old grouch or old has-been. Go get the basketball if you're on the floor. And if you, if you can't, let me know and I'll find somebody else. But you're too great for me to not to put a demand on you to go get the rebound. What's your answer if he says, I don't have enough in my tank to go get those, those balls, right? Pause. I, let, me, let me read. Let me readjust that question. What if he says, I don't have that much in the tank to go get those rebounds right now, Coach? My knee is bothering me. You're lying. You're what do you mean you're lying? No, no. I'm, you're asking me what I'm going to say to him. I'm going to show him. I see what's in your tank when the ball is in your hands and you're jab stepping at the three-point line. I see what's in your tank when we throw it to you on the mid-block and you turn around and you jab step and you spin and you give a miraculous finish with the contact and you get up and you high five. I see what's in your tank. So I'm not asking you something that I don't think you could do. I'm witnessing you do it on one end. I'm asking you to duplicate the energy, the effort, and the enthusiasm on the defensive end, pursuing the basketball, closing out possessions. So with this game heading back to Philly now, this series heading back to Philly. What would Philly. you have done? Well, let me ask you something. What would you have done if Michael Jordan was in Utah and said, my tummy hurt, I got a, I got a fever, I'm not feeling well, coach. I don't think I can, I don't think I can strip Carl Malone and then score on the other end. 
listen, man. First off, Joel Embiid, you can see the dude is barely making it up the court. You act like he's faking it. I saw Michael Jordan. Scotty and them was hugging him to the bench. I'm telling First, you, like, like I would tell anybody, you have more to offer. You have more to offer. Tell the body no. I watched the greats, the all-time greats do that consistently. And jo- Joel Embiid is on that list. He's in that category. So I'm putting a demand on greatness. I'm not putting a demand on goodness or okayness. I'm putting a demand on greatness is respect. My thing is the dude is compete. The dude threw the ball off the backboard trying to go dunk. And he's trying, he's competing. He's he's obviously hobbled. The dude's leg is hurt. That was the last game. Yeah, the I'm saying coach, though, what's the you- legendary Luke Conaseca said they they get yesterday's paper and they wrapped the, the dead fish in it. So don't tell me what about yesterday what he did in game one. I'm talking about game two. We gave one away. No, they definitely did. They gave you one away. You got me fired up, by the way. You got me fired up. Nah, it's good. It's good. I've been <laughs> I've been fired up, man. Ever since I watched that Lakers game, you should have seen me when I saw that Jamal Murray Murray shot go in. I've been hot ever since. I just sat in the dark for like 30 seconds. I'm like, yo, I turned off the TV. I had to, I had to rethink my 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 fanhood if I'm if I'm gonna stay with the Lakers. We still good though. That's why I threw on the threw on the hat. I had to tap in. Was I the only one that saw AD on their bench as they was jumping around? No, I saw that too. <laughs> 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 oh man, no, that was hilarious. I know somebody somebody fell into him on purpose. Oh my, my bad, AD. That was hilarious. <laughs> nah, man, that dude. That's that's why I got to give him credit though. Not not to go back to that game, but that dude is in every picture of a lot of jump shots, contests at the basket, point game. He in the in the picture. He's competing. He's playing defense. So I got to give him credit, man. Yeah, th- there was a time when you could say he was he wasn't competing, or he was hurt, or he was on the sideline, or wasn't playing at the level. He has absolutely played up to the level of Joker, who has been spectacular, but he's played up to the level and, 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 and really has been impressive on both sides of the floor. Now, heading to, heading to Philly, we're looking at the 76ers down 0-2. What's their mentality? Are they just saying, let's lick our wounds, let's readjust, attack from a different direction? Or what, what is the mentality going back to Philadelphia for the 76ers? The same thing in pretty much we talking about with the Lakers is the little things that cost us. We, we, let, we are letting role players impact the game. And I understand that the game plan is for Josh Hart to shoot threes. We're willing to give that up. But we don't want to give up wide open threes. I want you to be in, in, in the real world. I can put a demand for us to contain Jalen Brunson and also get to the body of Josh Hart and legitimately contest and close out to the, to the shot. We don't want to give him dash shots. He's proven that he can knock those down. I love what they're doing with Jalen Brunson. They're keeping length and size on him. Whether it's Nicholas Batum, it's uh, Kelly Oubre, they are keeping size on him and disrupting him, staying connected, keeping him off balance, contesting shots. So they've done an outstanding job of limiting the damage that he's been able to do in this series. And then they're attacking him on the other end. But you've got to close out possessions by rebounding, and then you've got to minimize the damage that the role players are doing and continue to do the job that you've done on Jalen Brunson. The good news for Philly, we got the best player in this series. That's, that's, that's without a doubt. Joel Embiid is the best player in this series. And, and, and Tyrese Maxey is playing and giving Jalen Brunson at least equal. You can say it's even playing field between those two. Now let's handle the rest of the business. Let's stay aggressive as role players, and let, let's take care of business and come back to Madison Square Garden. But this series is far from over. We gave a game away. Let's remember that. We gave a game away. We are the better basketball team. I would say with all due respect to Jalen Brunson, because I love Jalen Brunson, but at this point in the series, Maxie is outplaying him. You're right. You're right. He's the, and the if, shot if you're Jaylen value. Jalen Brunson, guess what? If I'm Jalen Brunson, you're 100% correct. You are 100% correct. We're up 2-0 because I've made the adjustments. Rather than trying to – reach the level that Maxi is reaching and score where he scores. Jalen Brunson has at times given up himself, dropped off past the Hartenstein, easy teardrop in, in, in the paint. So he sacrificed his own offense and was an unselfish, willing passer that has helped his team and his supporting cast get going. I mean, that sounds good, but they could easily be 1-1 and we'd be looking like this dude's shooting 20, 25% right now because he's shooting a high volume of shots. So he is getting his teammates involved, but he's also, he's getting it up. 
He is, but he's winning. And when you win, that's all that matters in New York City. He can get 50 and lose, and they're going to be like, Jalen Brunson's a bum. I know New York City. They'll be killing him in the barber shots. He's winning, and he's going to be eternally loved as long as they continue to win, and he competes at the level that he's been competing. You you know about dropping 50 in New York City? Yeah, City College, Summer League. (laughs) (laughs) All right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. For the Knicks, are you thinking we going to Philly and we trying to steal a game? Or how are you attacking uh, just the mentality going on the road now? If I'm the Knicks, the mentality is steal nothing. We're the better basketball team. We are up 2-0. We've won two games at home. We've proven through an 82-game season that we were the second best team in the Eastern Conference. It's no surprise. We haven't done anything that we didn't expect to do. Now the mindset is let's take care of business and get rid of these dudes so we can get the proper rest and recovery that we need by closing out this series in an emphatic fashion by winning two games in Philadelphia. But it starts in game three, and we continue to do the same things we're doing. We get our guy Jalen Brunson going, our role players continue to play, and we continue to make sure we leave every game just like they did in game two, even when they was losing. We leave every game as the hardest working team on the floor. Clearly, they were the most physical, most competitive, hardest working team in game two, Duplicate that in game three, and they'll be just fine. All right, we're going to touch on the early game. I don't know how many people watched it, but I know that we checked it out. We got the Cleveland Cavaliers going up 2-0 over the Magic. Why should people not overlook the Cavaliers? Because they have a home run hit in Donovan Mitchell. They have legit starting five. They have great depth. They have a big that that is elite at defending, elite at setting screens, diving to the cup, finishing at the rim and rebounding. They have a a young star in in Mobley. They are a talented basketball team that could have very well wound wound up as the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. Injuries all season long. They fought their way. It was a roller coaster season, inconsistent at times. But they have everything that it takes to create problems for anybody. So that's that that would be the mindset if I'm in the Eastern Conference. That's a legit basketball team that's dangerous. Yeah, them dudes are d- are good. You think uh they got a shot of winning the championship? In in all honesty, no, but I think they have the talent and I think that like I said, I don't give anybody a free ride to the to 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 the conference finals or the finals. I think it's any one of those teams in the East or West are beatable and can go for a long, sustained ride. So the Cleveland Cavaliers, Donovan Mitchell is healthy. He's proven he could be the best player in any one of these series. He's proven. Then you got Darius Garland. So you got two guys in the backcourt that can carry the load offensively, and they have depth, size, they're well-coached. It's an underrated basketball team that I wouldn't count out against anybody. Hmm. All right, all right. Bring, bring. We need Coach Mark on the line ASAP. We need to know what you're saying to the teams before these games. All right, are you ready? I guess I'm ready. All right. So I want to know, what is Coach Mars' pregame message to the Suns as they're currently down 1-0 to the Timberwolves? We are down 1-0, and we should be down 1-0. We offered no resistance to the Minnesota, Minnesota Timberwolves in game one. Anthony Edwards had his way. Carl Anthony Towns had his way. Rudy Gobert had his way. The Minnesota Timberwolves had their way. Chris Finch even had his way on me. We're down one nothing. Truth be told, we're the better basketball team with three future Hall of Famers. I can tell you, Exhibit A, Anthony Edwards was asked who his favorite player of all time was. He said Kevin Durant. KD, act like it, and we'll be fine. All right, all right. I like that. I like that. Now, what's what's your mentality? Because I see a... a uh, I see Ant-Man out there, and he's talking trash, going at it with KD, playing at an at a unbelievably high level. But how do you as a coach keep a young dude like that, his mentality in check, and just make sure he's on the right track as we go deep into these playoffs? No, you let him play. You let him play. And you don't kill his confidence. You don't, you don't try to damper his spirit. You inspire him and encourage him and feed that ma- that monster, that animal that thinks I'm better than KD, I'm better than Booker, I'm better than Beal, I'm the best player on this floor. And you put a demand. If you're, if, if you're that, my friend, well, then act like it. 
If you're that, act like it on the offensive end, on the defensive end, act like it as a scorer, act, act like it as a facilitator, act like it as a leader. He did it in game one. Now you tell him and you remind him. The great ones duplicate it. The great ones are not a one-night stand. They do it night in, night out, the next game, the next game, and the next game until ultimately they're wearing the jewelry. So you keep constant pressure on him that you are better than KD. You are better than KD. There's no Game one wasn't a fluke. Remind these people. They just watching Minnesota Timberwolves basketball on national television. All of a sudden, we're the only show on town. It only gets better, and It only gets better because the teams fall off. They're in Cancun, as Blue would say. And we will be the only show standing, and they have no choice but to mention you. They, they have the audacity to ask Michael Jordan about you. You have arrived, my friend. Now continue to climb the charts. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I don't, I don't think it's, it's far-fetched to say that he is the best player in this series. I think watching him this this year is crazy because we're talking about an all-time great in Kevin Durant, but at some point the torch has got to be passed on, and we may be watching that currently. I'm going to pump my brakes, though. He's a great player, and the future is awfully bright for him, and he's going to be in the discussion for the face of the league. But I'm going to say somebody on that Phoenix Suns team, and I'm going to give Kevin Durant the respect that he deserves and say he's the best player in this series. And Devin Booker's an outstanding player. Bradley Beal getting healthier and healthier. So I'm going to give them the respect. But if I'm Anthony Edwards and I'm on that side, I'm hyping them up and convincing them they got nothing for you. I'm glad we got a lot of series left to see because we're going to see by the end of this series, if, if Phoenix end up in Cancun, <laughs> then AE is better than them boys. I'm telling you, man, watch it. No, it'd be, it'd be embarrassing if they end up. And, and I say that respectfully to the Minnesota Timberwolves, but the Phoenix Suns came in to this se- season with a loaded deck expecting to win it all or be in the discussion. For them to lose in the first round would be embarrassing. All right, so I need your pick, man. Who wins game two? I'm going to go with the Phoenix Suns. I expect to see them bounce back, put pressure on the T-Wolves, respond off of some resistance defensively, knock down some shots early, establish a rhythm, and I expect to see a big game from KD and Booker. All right, here we go. We got the, we got the next one. Here we go. I want to know, what is Coach Mark's message to the Pacers, specifically Tyrese Halliburton, as they continue this series against the Bucks? Fellas, we're down 1-0, but let's bottle what we did in the second half of game one. That's the Pacer team that I fell in love with. That's the Pacer team that can beat anybody. The team that's aggressive, pushing, pushing the basketball, playing with great pace, executing with star power, defending at a high level, and, and, and a nightmare all across the court. We need to get back to that. No more Dame time. Dame time is dead. Dame time is dead. Guess what, Tyrese? USA basketball could have picked anybody in the country to represent them, any point guard in the country, and they chose you. You made the team over Dame Dollar. Now, Tyrese... I need you to play fast and furious. Let's go, baby. I like that. All right, all right, all right. There we go. A little fast and furious shout out. No I'm glad promos. you caught no, that. No free promos. No free promos. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So do you think it's going to be another damn time performance or will the Pacers come out victorious in this next game? I think if you're the Pacers, you got to try to make them uncomfortable and you have to do that early on. You don't want to allow him to get it going offensively early on. Then all of a sudden, he's a nightmare to defend. He's already a handful to defend. But you got to, at times, try to trap him, make him uncomfortable early, make sure he doesn't establish a rhythm, and then he's got to work his way back into the game. But I expect to see Dame continue to be aggressive. With no Giannis, he understands that he's got to be a scorer, but he needs help. And the help came in the form of Chris Middleton in game one. Can he duplicate that and take the pressure off of Dame? Hmm. Okay, going to the Western Conference and talking about the Clippers and the Mavericks, what do Kyrie and Luka have to do to adjust and make this series 1-1? Put an APB out on their supporting cast. Those two guys did the job. I need the supporting cast to show up and play aggressive, look to be step in position to take and make big-time shots and play fearless, defend at a high level, compete at a high level, and make shots at a high level. Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic did their job in game one. The numbers didn't lie. They did their job. I need the supporting cast to do what they've done all season long. And again, 
I'm not putting a demand. I'm not asking them to be special. I'm asking them to be the supporting cast they've been throughout the 82 game season. Who's your pick? Who wins game two? I'm pick, I'm picking the Mavs to win game two. I, I I believe in their supporting cast. They play well all season long. I believe in their bigs, their ability to set screens, dive, and create havoc at the rim, and also defensively, uh, also make shots. I believe their supporting cast is more than capable of making shots. I think they'll take the challenge defensively against Harden, against Paul George, limit the damage that Zubak does in that paint that he had his way in game one. And then Russell Westbrook, I expect them, them to not, not dare him to make shots, but make them a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm, I'm going to pick the Mavs in game two. All right, all right. I, I think I'm going to go with <clears> – <throat> that's a tough one. I got the Clippers, man. I got the Clippers. So I'm going to get you – we're going we gonna to revisit this. We're going to see who got it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've been giving out an award called the Mama There Goes That Man Award nightly. I need to know who receives that award tonight. A lot of good games. Who got it? It's a lot of good games. A, a lot of – People could have been up for the award. The award goes to Nikola Jokic. Mm. You look at his numbers, 27, 20, and 10 against a guy that was having his way in the first half. I can make the case the guy was embarrassing him, attacking him, making him look bad in the first half. The great ones find a way to respond. And Nikola Jokic did exactly that. And because of that, because of the Nuggets won, because of his willingness on a night where he had 27, 20, and 10, to become a screen setter and create a mismatch and let his sidekick win the ball game, he gets the second annual mama. There goes that man. <laughs> all right, all right. I feel it. I, I think I think he got it. He got it. That dude put on a performance tonight. So if you made it this far into the video, I want you to take a second and like, comment, subscribe, show some love to us, and also click the QR code in the corner. It'll take you to Underdog Fantasy, who's our sponsor today. And we want you to play the pick em game. That's our favorite. You can pick your favorite, favorite player. You could decide whether they're going to make 20 points, 10 assists, some rebounds, and have a lot of fun on there. So we appreciate y'all, man. That's a wrap for this episode of the Mark Jackson Show. Remember, a couple of years ago, my mom passed away. And I remember my cousin Calvin at the service saying to me, pulling me aside and saying, when you stay with your hurt, your hurt stays with you. It woke me up and encouraged me. My mom wouldn't want me to die hurt. She wanted me to continue to inspire, wanted me to continue to impact, wanted to, me to continue to be a difference maker. Now I'm talking to you. You suffered a loss, maybe a loved one, maybe a job, maybe even lost your spark. Allow me to play the DJ. The pity party's over, my friend. Let's go. Let's go. Blessings.